Ladies and gentlemen, I have a written text, uh, what they call the chair's summary. But I'd like to make a few comments before that. You talked about generosity not being linked to a person's bank balance. The beauty of this experience has been that the generosity came from ordinary poor people, people with the limited means. That was the class that showed generosity to the Afghan refugees and that must be recognized. You talked of hope and uh, as I said this is my second stint as foreign minister. I was never uh, lacking hope. We have seen difficult times in our relationship with Afghanistan. But I was hopeful and I am hopeful that there will be a realization one day that both nations and the people of Pakistan and Afghanistan would realize, and they do, and we do in Pakistan, that we are joined by geography. We cannot walk away. We have to live together. We have to carve our future collectively in our mutual interest and collectively we can propel this region to a new level of prosperity. This conference in my view has been timely. This conference I think has given recognition to what Pakistan has done what Iran has done. And thank you for being generous in your, in your comments and, and your remarks. I think the people of both the countries, particularly the people of Khaybar Pakhtunkhwa, Arbab Saab, you gave examples of your village and how you as an individual and your family was exposed to refugees. That's an example, a case in point, how, how families responded. And believe you me, if the people of Khaybar Pakhtunkhwa and Balochistan had not responded the way they did respond, the government couldn't have done it. Government resources and institutional ability was very limited. It's the people that made it possible. And that is the beauty of this relationship. Another important thing that has flown out of the discussions that you've had in the last two days is the recognition that the international community perhaps could not mobilize sufficient resources to deal with the challenge adequately. That's come out yesterday, and I'm sure uh, even today people must have talked about it. And thank you, Ambassador for Finland has just uh, stood up and he spoke that you are willing to host uh, the next uh, you know, uh, uh, event in Geneva uh, and gather uh, uh, different organizations uh, for a commitment for the future. Thank you for doing so. The most important thing is that we the magnanimity shown by people. Our Bab Saab pointed out that for, for over four decades people lived in difficult conditions. And it's never living easy it's never easy living out of your home. But the relationship has been frictionless. How? How is that possible? I think let's give 
due credit to the local ravage and the customs, the culture of the Pakhtun culture. I think a lot uh, is linked to that as well. And values. The Prime Minister spoke of human values and Islamic values. Dr. Sanya Nishtar yesterday pointed out that there was no discrimination. When patients lined up, doctors treating them did not differentiate. Is he an Afghan or a Pakistani? Is she an Afghan or is she a Pakistani? And that is the approach that was so important. Then, refugee camps are never easy. But the beauty of this experience has been that these refugee camps were though at times challenging, but they were refugee camps, they were not concentration camps. And I hope you understand the difference, and you do understand the difference. People were allowed to move out. People were allowed to ply their transports. People were allowed to trade. I saw um, Afghan um, uh, uh, men working in the field of Punjab in the agriculture sector. They were given gainful employment. And that is uh, very, very important. And the last thing that is uh, important, and this uh, conference did highlight that, and that is partnership for the future. We need to build a partnership for the future. And my friend, the acting foreign minister of Afghanistan, must go back with this very clear message that we want to build that partnership. It is essential to build that partnership. Uh, we can easily we can easily look at faults we can easily uh, point fingers but there's a history of coexistence of caring and sharing at times when people comment they should not forget that long history of sharing and caring. And I hope the next time the Vice President comes to Islamabad, he keeps that in mind. Honorable Ministers, distinguished delegates, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I have the privilege to present to you the chair summary of the two-day proceedings of the International Conference. The International Conference on 40 years of hosting Afghan refugees in Pakistan, a new partnership for solidarity took place on the 17th, 18th of February 2020 in Islamabad, Pakistan. The conference was convened by the government of Pakistan in collaboration with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees to mark 40 years since the beginning of the Afghan displacement to demonstrate solidarity with Afghan refugees and the countries and communities that have so generously hosted them to renew commitment to finding solutions and to galvanize more equitable and predictable burden and responsibility sharing in the context of one of the most protracted refugee situations in the world. The event was attended by more than 500 participants, including the Prime Minister of Pakistan, the Secretary General of the United Nations, the second Vice President of Afghanistan, the United Nations High Commissioner 
for refugees, ministers and other high-ranking representatives of governments, international organizations, humanitarian and development agencies, international financial institutions, civil society, private sector, academia, media, as well as refugees. While the conference provided a unique opportunity to reflect on the achievements, challenges, and lessons learned over the past 40 years, it also stressed the urgent need to move away from the status quo towards a renewed partnership for solidarity, building on the outcomes of the Global Compact on Refugees and the first Global Refugee Forum. In this spirit, many delegates cautioned that the world was witnessing a rising tide of populism, nationalism, and ethnocentrism, and urged the international community that it was more imperative than ever before to take collective action to thwart such attitudes and tendencies. The participants stressed the need to ensure that the commitments of the Global Refugee Forum materialize and encouraged UNHCR and the Government of Pakistan to work together to identify particular pledges which may be relevant for the Afghan refugee situation. The participants applauded the unparalleled solidarity and hospitality of the governments and people of Pakistan and Iran, despite facing their own security and socio-economic challenges, and commended their inclusive policies towards Afghan refugees, some of which have inspired the global compact on refugees. While participants appreciated the robust support of the international community for Afghan refugees over the past decades, it was widely acknowledged that the international support for the two principal host countries has significantly declined over the past years and, there, and that their commendable efforts must be met with more commensurate and equitable burden and responsibility sharing by the international community. The conference recognized and highly appreciated Pakistan's generosity and progressive policies that have enabled millions of Afghan refugees and nationals to accept refuge, health, education, livelihoods, and social mobility without discrimination. For over four decades, participants were informed of the Prime Minister's special dispensation to allow Afghan refugees to open bank accounts in order to facilitate their participation in the formal economy and enable self-reliance. The conference also noted that these resilience building and solutions oriented measures would enhance the potential of Afghan refugees to sustainably reintegrate upon return and contribute to the development of Afghanistan. Additional efforts are being undertaken to enable Afghan nationals to obtain legal travel documents and benefit from the generosity, uh, uh, benefit from the generous visa policy of Pakistan. Voluntary repatriation has been pursued over four decades. It has now become imperative to move towards time-bound and well-resourced mutually agreed framework for, repa for repatriation of Afghan refugees. The conference called for accelerated efforts to increase resettlement opportunities of Afghan refugees and encouraged third countries to open complementary pathways for the Afghan refugees in the form of increased scholarships and livelihood opportunities. Appreciating the continued generosity of the host countries, 
the participants stressed that the ultimate solution lies in Afghanistan and that repatriation on, and sustainable reintegration is one of the solutions for the majority of Afghan refugees. Noting the reinvigorated signals of a possible pathway for peace, part participants highlighted that to enable sustainable return and reintegration, a prerequisite would be a comprehensive Afghan-owned and Afghan-led process, peace process, and urgent investments in the priority areas of return and reintegration in Afghanistan. Absence of necessary global support and resource allocation was also considered as a major impediment to the repatriation of Afghan refugees. The conference acknowledged that the Afghanistan-Pakistan action plan for peace and solidarity could yield peace dividends for the entire region, provided that there is a firm political will to implement it. It was also cautioned that spoilers of peace and reconciliation in Afghanistan should not be given a chance. The participants acknowledged that the progress has been considerably slow made within the framework of the regional solution strategy for Afghan refugees. That proposed mutually agreed roadmap must be overcome, must overcome the barriers that prevent pursuit of meaningful solutions for generations of displaced Afghans, the majority of whom are children and youth. Robust investments in the human capital, resilience and portable skills of refugee youth in host countries enable young Afghans to contribute to their host communities pending return while simultaneously enhancing their potential to sustainably reintegrate and proactively participate in the nation building and reconstruction processes in Afghanistan upon return. A panel discussion led by the UNHCR Goodwill Ambassador and attended by female refugees and representatives of civil society and private sector highlighted the importance of proactive participation of women and girls in decision-making processes. While there is hope that the revitalized peace efforts leading to an intra-Afghan reconciliation process will pave the way for a better future for the people of Afghanistan and for the gradual return of refugees, it was emphasized that sustainable peace and security can only be achieved through immediate and better integrated humanitarian development and peace efforts. It was underscored that repatriation and reintegration of Afghan refugees should be part of any peace and reconciliation process in Afghanistan. To this end, the participants called for reinvigorated support for Afghanistan national development plans, including targeted investments into uh, the priority areas of return and reintegration identified by the government of Afghanistan and UNHCR, which are fully aligned with Afghanistan's national peace and development framework, including the Citizens Charter. The support platform for the SSAR launched in December 2019 provides an important momentum and opportunity to redefine the way in which the international community as a whole responds to the Afghan refugee situation. In recognition of the inclusive policies of the host countries, enhanced support for host communities and renewed commitment of the government of Afghanistan to create an environment conducive to voluntary repatriation of Afghan refugees in dignity and safety and their sustainable reintegration. 
it refers to me, uh, the Foreign Minister of Pakistan ruled out a seven-point agenda aimed at addressing the Afghan refugee situation in Pakistan and operationalizing the SSAR support platform, including a proposal to establish an international fund to support the return of Afghan refugees. The participants noted that the collective ability of the international community to deliver on the key objectives of the support platform will be a litmus test for the global compact on refugees. Its applicability to the most protracted refugee situation and its promise of greater responsibility sharing with countries that have shouldered the burden. To this end, the participants emphasize the need to strengthen the existing partnerships and to forge new ones to broaden and diversify the base of support through engagement of non-traditional donors, development agencies, private sector, and other relevant stakeholders. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees is requested to bring this chairperson summary to the attention of UNHCR's Executive Committee to consider and develop a strategy for its implementation under a relevant agenda item. Thank you.